Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the third video in the I2C Slave series, and today we will modify the slave driver a little bit more. In the previous video we saw how to receive data in a circular buffer, and we were able to receive any amount of data the master was sending. It was a good method for receiving data, but it was hard to process the received data. This is because the previous data in the buffer is overwritten by the new data, and we should process it before it happens. There is a better alternative, and today we will cover it in this video. If you remember the idle line interrupt from the UART video, this will be easier for you to understand. Basically we will call a function to process the data in two different situations. The first situation is, if the master stops sending data, but the data size is less than the defined size. And the second is, if the master sends the data equal to, or more than the defined size. If the data size is more than the defined size, the slave will respond with a NAC signal. Let's implement this. I will continue the project from where I left in the previous video. Here is the I2C source file from the previous project. Let's modify the receive complete function. Here the Rx count variable will still increment, but the rest of the code will only execute if the Rx count is less than the buffer size. Now since we don't want to receive more than 6 bytes of data, so when the Rx count is equal to 5, we will call the I2C receive function to receive one byte of data, but with the option of the last frame. Otherwise, call the receive function with the option of the next frame. Let's understand this execution. Assume that the master is sending 9 bytes of data, and the slave has already received 4 bytes. The receive complete callback is called, and the Rx count will increment to 4. It is still less than the buffer size, so this loop will execute. Since Rx count is 4, this statement is false, hence the control will go in the else statement. We will again receive one byte of data with the option of the next frame. We have received 5 bytes of data, and the Rx count is 5. This condition is still true. Now this statement becomes true, and hence the control will come inside this loop. Here we will receive one byte of data with the option of the last frame. Now we have received 6 bytes of data, and the receive complete callback will be called again. The Rx count will increment to 6. Since the Rx count is 6 now, this condition will become false, and nothing will happen after this. So this way the reception will stop when the 6 bytes have been received. I also want to add one more feature here. Whenever the master sends a new data, the Rx count will reset. This way the new data will always be stored from the beginning of the Rx buffer. Now let's add the option to process the data. As I mentioned, the data will be processed in two scenarios. The first one is when the slave has finished sending 6 bytes of data, or more. So we will write another condition here. If the Rx count is equal to 6, we will call the function, process data. The second scenario is when the slave stops, sending at less than 6 bytes. We already know that an error is triggered in this case. So inside the error callback, first we will get the error code. And if the error code is 4, which implies the acknowledgement failure, we will process the data. Create a separate function to process the data, and so whatever you want with the data. Here the new data is always stored at the beginning of the Rx buffer, and the received data size is equal to the Rx count. I will show this in the debugger. Let's build and debug the code. I have prepared the terminal for sending the data. Let's send 4 bytes of data. Let me put a breakpoint at this function. 
All right we hit the breakpoint. The master sent only 4 bytes, so the Rx count variable will be equal to 4, and the valid data is in the first 4 bytes of the Rx buffer. Here you can check the call sequence, and as you can see, the process function was called from the error callback. All right let's send another 4 bytes. Notice that unlike the previous video, this time the data is stored again from the beginning. Now the first two bytes were overwritten. Since the Rx count is equal to 2, the valid data is the first two bytes of the Rx buffer. Now we will send six bytes at once. The process function was called again, but this time it was called from the receive callback function. Now let's see what happens when we send 9 bytes of data. Here the NAC is sent by the slave. You can see the 6 bytes were received and stored in the buffer, but then the slave sent the NAC response after that. The process data function will be called after receiving the 6 bytes. The I2C becomes unusable after this, as it does not automatically recover from it. If you check further in the debugger, you can see the BTF flag is set. The BTF flag is set, when the data transfer has finished according to the slave, but there is still some data in the data register. This is exactly what is happening in this case. The slave wants to receive 6 bytes, and it has already received it. But the master sent 9 bytes, so there is still some data in the data register. We will handle these flags in future videos. For now you can just increase the Rx buffer size to a high value, and communicate easily. As long as the data sent by the master is less than or equal to the Rx buffer size, there shouldn't be any problem. This is it for the video. I hope you understood the concept. I am covering different methods of receiving data, and it's up to you which method you want to implement. We will continue it in the next video, where we will write the memory registers of the slave device. That's it for today. Leave comments in case of any doubt. The link to download the code is in the description below. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.